what it is is a 440 acre lot of land that used to be a mine that's just the most beautiful forest that I've, I've seen on this trip. And you'll see I had an artist uh, put together uh, a symbol, three concentric circles, stands for truth, beauty, and goodness. This property has a spiritual purpose, and so we're here to help manifest that purpose. We are in quite possibly my favorite temple ever, in the middle of the woods. Three circles are truth, beauty, and goodness. And if that were just everyone's, we'd all be in a much better place. This lake is down five feet, six feet right now. It's constantly being fed by streams, many of them spring fed. It's also a basin for rainwater. And so it's a dynamic ecosystem. You can see there's a heron sitting there. It's full of alligators. It's uh, stocked with bass and brim. So we're going to go back and we're going to look at the overflow spillway that broke. This used to be the secondary water source for the city of Quincy. They didn't maintain the edges of it and when the water got around it, it lost the connection to the banks and just blew out the concrete. But in the process of this, I found out that there's over two million gallons that go through here in a normal day without rain. When we rebuild this, we're planning to put a hydroelectric plant in it as well. Now, when it rains and stuff, it's like five million gallons a day. So it varies, but at a minimal, it's gonna be probably enough to generate some electricity. We'll run it to the grid, We'll work out a deal with the local electric provider because they need green electricity. You know, they're mandated to have it, so they, they're happy to get it. Come save us, we thought to give her everything. There's seep springs because the aquifer is so high around here that it seeps out of the banks of these ditches and creates these big ravines. Save us, we thought to give her everything, but only because no, there's a place where we lost that sting. Oh, sweet sting coming up. That if I dreamed of a place that I could build or be at and have a home and have as a backyard, it would be, it's almost like they've already done it. They've already created this place. One word of wisdom, she's gonna save my soul. Their whole moral code is truth beauty and goodness. That's what they want to pass through nature to their kids, grandkids, and to the next generation. And I think Brittany and I both really connected with them as people. They have money and resources and they're using them for good. It is Thanksgiving Day and I'm about 10 miles from where we'll be camping tonight. I just had a really interesting experience having to do with water. I'm at the Bolins Country Store in Wakissa. There are signs everywhere that say, say no to Nestle water because Nestle's trying to come in and buy up the Wakissa River and a bunch of other watershed areas around here to put in a bottling plant, which is really happening all over. And I've heard about Nestle and other companies doing this. I walk into the store here and for the first time in 2,900 miles, I can't say how many convenience stores I've been into where I've been able to fill up from the tap and whatever's going on with the water situation here, uh, I was denied water. 
at this, this store here where uh, water's such a big issue. They were like, screw you, I'm not gonna give you cyclist on Thanksgiving day who needs a bottle of water to get from point A to point B, bottle of water. It was so nice to see everywhere in people's yards, families eating and talking and laughing and kids climbing in the trees and, and playing games in the yard and people just being together. So it is Thanksgiving Day, it's the evening, and uh, we just rode about 70 miles to a KOA right on the side of Interstate 10. Probably not the most exciting Thanksgiving I've ever had. The intensity of this kind of trip has the potential to create a love or hate uh, relationship between two people. So it either really, really works or it totally doesn't. And, and either one becomes apparent very quickly. And I think Gar and I have been uh, awesome, awesome traveling companions. So for that, I am hugely grateful. The water crisis I heard about from one of the foremost speakers and researchers in the world, Maude Barlow, in Portland six months ago, and it changed my life. This is our lives, this is our world, and we're running out of water. The demand by 2050 is going to be skyrocketed over what we can actually produce. We've already dried up a huge chunk of our rivers. Our deltas are falling completely away into the ocean because there's no fresh water coming out. And that's because we've dammed up so much. And politically, ecologically, economically, what's going on with our water is absolutely out of this world. And it's unregulated. And it's this like wild, wild west all over the world. We've dried up seas. Inland seas are not there anymore. And all of us are affected. I just felt great. And I don't want to stop riding my bicycle. <laughs> and like setting up camp tonight. I just, I feel like everything is so honed in. I actually thought that when I was gonna be interviewing people about water on this trip that people wouldn't have anything to say. I actually thought that. I made this more of a reflexive journey because I was like, I don't think some guy on the street's gonna be able to talk about water. Every single one of my interviews has had in-depth information and discuss about their water use, their community's water use, and what they've experienced. It is the issue and I knew that, but now I know it. We have learned a lot on this trip, and we have gotten very good at doing what we do, and we get to do it for three more days. So, that's kind of crazy. There's so much we can do. That's the other thing. If this was just a problem, I would probably be ignoring it because I don't want to be depressed 24-7. Rainwater and catchments are something that we can all do. And we could, we could store in our basements a year's supply of water. We can be self-sustaining. We can make this happen, even in deserts. But instead, corporate legislation in Colorado already, they are literally saying we cannot catch our rainwater. Yet, we make these huge reservoirs where water is being evaporated like crazy and it's just irresponsible what we've done for so long. It's not a sustainable model. It cannot go on. And most of us don't want to see it. Most of us don't know about it. But Brittany and I are now aware 
and it's an honor and a responsibility to share this. Yeah, there's no way to summarize all of this, and there's no way to pick out the one best moment, and there's no way to, to name a, a favorite day or a favorite place. It's all one thing, and it will forever be one of the best things I've ever done. People are scared of other people. I'm not scared of people. I love people now. It's kind of ridiculous. I have a different view of our country. I have a different view of myself and how I can go about doing things in this country and in this world. Life's good. It's a good day. And I am at the Blue Hole, which is one of the hundreds of natural springs in Florida. And you can see right through the bottom, it's crystal clear spring water. Florida has more of these springs than anywhere in the world. And I had no idea. And I walked up this morning and I was in heaven. It's an average of 72 degrees. The reason that's a big deal, and the reason there's so much fog coming off here today, is it was 30 degrees last night, and it's just above freezing right now. I'm wearing everything that I have except cycling shorts to stay warm. I'm the only one here, and it doesn't get any better than this. I'm just seeing one of these wonders where it takes 25 to 40 years for the water to travel up from the spring and it and it arrives and it's just celebrated by the sun. And people down here are working so hard to protect as water becomes more demanded and more taken and I think that these springs that are naturally desalinated and come up from way deep within the earth. I needed to see this and this goes so well and so beautifully with all my research with water. It's part of the Rail the Trail program, which definitely is in Florida, but we've actually seen it all the way across the country where old railroad tracks are and lines are being paved over for recreational use. 